Hi, it's Drew at Finale. In this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to input pricing and calculate a total price for a show that you've designed. Now, this information is useful for every Finale 3D user, but this video is specifically created for individuals who are taking part in our Pyromusical Design Competition. So stay tuned to see how to calculate the budget for your show. Here you can see on the screen I have Finale 3D and I've finished designing my show, or at least I'm getting very close to the end and I'd like to kind of see where my budget is. Now, you can see down in the lower right hand corner of the design window that I see the total count of items in my show and that none are selected, but there's no pricing information. That's because uh, I, don't ha I haven't entered any pricing information in yet. Uh, you can do this as you design, or in this case I've waited till the end of the design just to make this example. Uh, first, let's pull up a web browser and take a look at the competition rules. So here I have the Finale 3D homepage. To access the competition information, I can click on the banner, or I can go up to Resources and Contests, and here's the competition rules in English. I'll just go to the Contests page by clicking here, which is the same thing you get if you click on the banner. So, Contests. Here's a list of all the contests, with the current contest at the top of the page. Here you can see we have the competition rules in English, as well as Spanish, if that's your first and preferred language. So let's jump into the competition rules. And for this video, we're just focused on the budget, so let's scroll down to the section that's specific to the product budget. Here it is, virtual budget. This is very important. Um, the virtual budget is one of the criteria for designing your show. If your show is submitted with a, a total budget of over 100,000, and we call it points because it's not any specific currency, then um, the show won't be passed on to the judges. So you need to confirm that your show does not exceed 100,000 points. How do you do that? Well, first we provide this table that gives some examples of some different products, a good cross-section of products, and their points value. So, uh, it's very straightforward. A 25 millimeter device is 25 points. So for each millimeter, it's one point. Now, I know some folks work in English uh, or using inches, so we have those um, numbers listed as well as in addition to the metric. So. 25 millimeters is one inch, so that's 25 points, and we have that kind of translation here across all the sizes up to 10 inch. Now there are some other types of effects that are permitted, such as candles. There's an example calculation for candles here. Basically it's the same, so it's 25 millimeters would be, is one inch, that's still 25 points, but then you multiply by the number of shots. So here's an example with a five shot candle, one inch, i.e. 25 millimeters, 125 points. And we'll get into an example in the actual show itself. So scrolling down, take a look at some other effects. Uh, so here you have a flame shot, all patterns, uh, five points. That includes a single, uh, a single nozzle flame or like a five finger flame or anything like that, all five points, just to make it simple. Um, ground strobes that are one second, we have uh, just five points. And then other longer duration effects such as gerbs or strobe pots are basically one point per second. So here you see a 30 second for 30 points, 60 second for 60 points. Now it's up to you to use this information to calculate your budget. I want to make uh, a couple specific notes here about the products. Um, it is very important to take a look at uh, this effect selection up here and notice their criteria. Uh, specifically two things. One, Multi-shot cakes are prohibited. So you can use candles, but cakes are prohibited. Cake means anything with more than one tube. So if it's not a single shot or a candle, then it's a multi-shot cake, um, then it's prohibited. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a plate or a slice or a hundred shot cake that's a square shape, it just doesn't matter, it's prohibited. All cakes are prohibited if it has more than one tube. The other prohibited item is any shells over 10 inch. Now, these rules are sort of arbitrary, but they're just for this particular competition. So if you want to win, you want to be have your show judged, just make sure to follow these rules. In the future, we'll have other competitions with different rules. So um, let's jump back into Finale 3D and use this information to price out the show that we've designed. All right, so here looking at the show, the first thing that I need to do is make sure that I'm looking at the correct collection of effects. Here you can see in the upper right hand corner of the effects window that I'm looking at my effects, which is not what we need. So what I'd like to do is switch to per show effects. Per show effects are the specific collection of effects that have been 
populated into this list as the show was designed. Uh, so this is sort of like a time capsule for this particular show that contains copies of all the effects, no matter where they were created, no matter how they were created, or where they're saved, copies of every effect in the show are in your per show effect. So this is the one place where you can see everything used in the show. Now, for this example, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about these layouts up here. These are the default layouts. This stands for editing, this stands for racking, and this stands for scripting. You can see the full names here. Now, if you don't see these, it's likely that they've either been deleted from your show, which can happen using the, the delete function here, or you perhaps are running an older, outdated version of Finale 3D, and I strongly recommend getting the latest version of Finale 3D by going to the downloads section of the Finale 3D website. Uh, for this video, we're going to start with the scripting layout, which I've already selected, but I'll change to the editing layout so you can see here are the um, columns that are displayed and the widths of the columns have changed. So when you change the layout by clicking on the small puzzle piece shortcut, you get a specific layout. So I want to go with the scripting layout for this example. And then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to notice that I, of all the effects that are in the show, some of them have a used quantity that's blank, while others have a used quantity that matches the show. We can show all of the quantities that are used and sort by those quantities by clicking on the column header. Now you see they're incrementing up, two, three, four, five, six. If I sort, if I click again, I'm sorting uh, the opposite direction, and that brings all the effects that I didn't end up using in the show uh, to the top of the list. Now, this means that at one time I put these effects into the show, but they're no longer in the script. So what I'd like to do is use a menu function that will clean up the script by removing the unused items instead of manually removing them one at a time. So how do I do that? First, I need to go to the effects menu, and then I'll do delete unreferenced per show effects. Be careful to choose this specific option. So if I select that, Finale tells me that per show effects has 22 unreferenced effects. And I can just click yes. Click OK. Now you can see we only have effects that have at least one in the show listed in the effects window. All right, perfect. So um, what I need to do now is try to arrange the layout a little bit to make it easier to work with. Again, we chose the scripting layout, so I can just click on that again to bring it back. What that did there was change so it's sorted by part number. I'm going to hide some columns that I don't need just so I can make it a little bit easier to work with to enter their prices. So I'll hide the available column because we don't need that at the moment. I'll go ahead and hide the pre-fire column. I'll hide the subtype column to prevent any confusion and everything else I'll go ahead and keep. So size is important, VDL is important, and type is important here. So let's go ahead and shrink a couple of these so we can get a better look at these columns. The next thing I'd like to do is make a change to the way the interface works. What we're going to do in this, in this project is enter prices. You can see when I click on a cell for a price, uh, this is the price column here, uh, the entire row is selected. Now that's the default click action for the effects window. But what we'd like to do is have it work a little bit more like an Excel spreadsheet, for example, where when we click on a cell, we're just selecting that individual cell. So let me show you how to make a change there to the user settings. You go to the file menu, user settings, select click action for effects window, and then choose select cell right here. Now you can see the difference. Remember previously when I clicked on a price or actually would not have mattered, anywhere I clicked in the window I was selecting that entire row for the effect I was clicking on. Now when I click on a cell I get that specific cell. So this makes it just easier when we're doing some editing in the table here. Okay, next Remember that when we reviewed the rules, we said that cakes were um, not permitted and also uh, that shells over 10 inch are not prohibited. Are prohibited. So we want to go ahead and check our show to make sure we don't have any cakes and make sure that we don't have any shells over 10 inch. So let's talk about how to do that. Um, one of the easiest ways and the first way is I'll just go to the type drop down list here at the top. Now if you selected the scripting uh, layout, if I click this again, it'll bring back those columns we don't need. So I won't do that, but if you have selected that, it populates these filters up here. Uh, each layout accompanies a set of filters. So you should have type. If you don't see type, you can go to the blue gear menu and you can go to the add or remove filter option and you can turn on and off 
any filters that you need. For example, type here you see by the dot is already turned on, so I will not make any changes because I have what I need. So let's go to the type drop-down list, and then, ah, see, we have some cakes. So we'll choose that. Now here we can see that I actually have quite a number of cakes in the show. So if I were to submit this show for judging right now, it would be rejected because it contains multi-shot cakes. So we need to go ahead and remove those. So I'm not going to delete them because I might want to go through my show and see where each one is and come up with some kind of substitute. But I just want to point out one way to find cakes in a show. Now, the reason these came up is because the type column for each of these is set to cake. But it's also possible to have a multi-shot cake in your show where the type is set incorrectly. So another way to check for cakes is to use the search box and search instead for, some, for something like shot. So now you can see I've brought up all the items here that have the word shot in them. And what I'm doing is just I can then sort by um, VDL, for example. And here, by looking at the VDL, I can see those items that have a shot quantity at the beginning of the VDL. And here you can see uh, this also brought up my, my candles, which are permitted. But sometimes it's possible to have an item that's not uh, does not have the type of cake, but it is a cake, and you can tell from the VDL because it has multiple shots. If you submit a show with a multi-shot item that is not a candle um, or is fanned or anything like that, then the show will be rejected. So be careful to make sure that you don't have cakes, even cakes that um, have the wrong type. So those are two ways to find the cakes in your show. Of course, if you design the show, you'll probably know right where the cakes are. So let's jump into uh, setting the prices and then checking the budget to the show. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and sort by size. So I'll do that. This just makes it a bit easier to do the pricing so we can kind of um, copy and paste down the list here. So what I want to do is uh, because the uh, candles are the kind of more tricky to set the prices because you have to multiply the size caliber by the number of shots, we'll go ahead and do those first and get those out of the way. So I'll go back to type and I'll choose candle. And this will just filter to my two candles. So here I have a 25 millimeter candle and it's an eight shot. So I'll go ahead and multiply 25 times eight and I get 200. So the price for this is 200 points. Now there's a dollar sign. I can just be ignored. We're, we're working in points. Okay, same process here, 35 times eight. The price for this candle is 280. So now we've priced our candles and you can see we have two items in the show and I'll have a price. And you can see that price is now listed in the lower right hand corner of the Finale 3D design window. So now it's going to start incrementing upwards as we price our effects. So let's go back to all effects and let's keep pricing. So here we have a, a, a 0.75 inch or a three quarter inch. That's about the same as 19 millimeters. So I'll just enter 19. Again, three quarters of an inch. And now we have uh, a 25 millimeter single shot item. So everything else is a single item. Obviously the cakes need to be removed. We're not gonna do that in this video. So 25 millimeters is 25 points. Skip the cake. Again, we have 25, 25, 25, because one inch is the same as 25 millimeters. If you remember the table from the competition rules page. So let me show you a trick to make it a little bit faster so you don't have to type the number over and over. I'll just select the cell. I'll hold control on my keyboard and press C to copy. And then I'll go ahead and select these three, uh, actually four cells, and then do control V to paste. So now I'm just pasting that number there. It just makes it easier than typing each one. So let's continue downward and update all the prices. And again, as I do this, you'll see the price is incrementing here in the lower right hand corner of the script. Now, if I accidentally price a cake, of course I'm gonna remove those so I can come back and deal with that later. So. 30 for 30 millimeters, and then here, here we'll skip the cake. Coming down to one and a half inch, I have that equates to about 38 millimeters, and then we'll just go ahead and copy that down. Now here I see there's some cake, so I'm going to skip these and just go to here. 40 millimeters, 40 points. Copy those down. 50 millimeters, 50 points. But now I see that two inch, which is also 50 points, comes all the way down to here. So let's go ahead and do that. Three inch, 75 points. Copy that to all the threes. 
four inch is 100 millimeters or 100 points, so on and so forth. So 125 for my five inch, and then 150 for my six inch, and there we go. That completes the show. Now we can see that because there's nothing beyond six inch, I don't have any 10 inchers or anything bigger than 10 inch in the show, 10 inch being the maximum allowed. You can also see that here by going to the size drop down list. These are all the sizes of the effects that are in the show. And you can see there's nothing, they're sorted by size from smallest to largest, and there's nothing larger than six inch. So let's really quickly go back to cake and make sure I didn't price out any of those. I did not. How about my candles are priced? All right, let's take a quick look in the lower right hand corner. I'm at 100,689 points. Uh, so I'm a little bit over budget, plus I have some cakes that need to be replaced, but my design's looking pretty good. So the next step would be to go through and remove those cakes, substitute them out, just delete them or substitute them out for single shot effects or other low level effects, and I should be good to go. The other thing I didn't demonstrate in this video was the strobe pots. Um, I could do uh, different pricing on the strobe pots where I can do the pricing per second. That could help me drop my budget down a little bit. So instead of pricing this by um, 25 because it's one inch, I could go ahead and search for something like uh, strobe and I could bring up my strobe pots here and I could dial this down to 15. So that's kind of a quick adjustment for those. I don't have any flame effects, so that didn't apply in this particular show, but I think this has been a really good example for you. So I hope you found this video useful in terms of pricing out a show. Even if you're not participating in the competition, um, this is kind of a good uh, thing to know how to do. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, good luck in the competition, and feel free to check out all the other great videos on the Finale 3D YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.